insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 62, Alternatives and Options. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my vibrant and energetic co-host, <laughs> Michelle Whalen. Well, hi, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing today, sweetheart? Uh, good, good. You know, got up early, did the... Our, my my Saturday morning ritual, which is um, being the hunter gatherer uh, and going to the Amish farmers market for donning our the mask and the donning the mask gloves. and the gloves and and everything. Um, you know, as I was telling you uh, last week, because of the holiday, seemed to be a lot more people, so there was a line. It, actually took a little while to get in uh today when i got there there was a line but it was because they hadn't opened yet um and then once you know they opened everybody went in um everybody you know it, it's it's funny to to see the you know progression of things you know when things first started you know people were in gloves um you know some people had them some people didn't then it kind of progressed to the point where not only everybody that's shopping is wearing masks, but even the Amish workers right. are wearing right. masks and gloves and, and everything. Um, and everybody, you know, it, it's kind of a tight area, but everybody tries to, you keep know, their keep their distance. Yeah. And, you know, like if it's a, a deli counter or something where you have to pull a number, you know, people are sometimes staying there. You're like, excuse me, excuse me. And everyone's like. Yeah. You know, moving out of the way and everything. Um, but it's that's kind of the new normal ish. Right. You and know, that was actually almost the title of this podcast today was the new, new normal with the stories that we. <laughs> yeah. Had. Yeah. So, it, you know, and I went and, you know, within a half hour or so, I managed to get, you know, everything that we we needed for the week. You know, you know, it's funny. I used to, you know, I, I famously would joke that. You know, you come to a four-way stoplight, and that's a true sign of civilization, whether or not you can get through it right, alive. Right, right, right. Now it's just going to the market is a true right. sign of civilization you to know, see who can cooperate in enough of a way to right. like get I the material and the food that you need you in know, order to survive and then get out of there. Yeah, like I haven't been in, like Target's been the only store that I've I've gone into and I've been into Target, what, twice, three times, I think, since everything. And it was to find toilet paper. That was really, right. you know, how... Toilet paper, the currency of the zombie Yeah, apocalypse. because I couldn't get it, you know, we couldn't get it anything anywhere else. Now, for our other groceries, you know, we, we you know, usually do Walmart. And Walmart, I do, you know, the, the grocery pickup. So I haven't physically been in a Walmart in almost two months. Um, whereas the Target I've been in, but Targets always are, are more open. You, you don't have as many crowds, right, um, right. you know, and, you know, and I visit one that's not as crowded as, as some of the others in the area. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's a weird thing waking up on a Saturday morning, you know, knowing we're going to do the podcast, but it's like, I got to get the hunter, you know, gatherer. I, I must go and hunt right. to, to get the food to sustain us, you know, for the well, week. And so, so. And, oh, so that's, that's our domestic, uh, alternatives and options to, right. to survival now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stories that we have today are entertainment methods of, mm -hmm. Yeah. alternatives and options uh, to get through. So we've got some uh, uh, stories in our Disney Detective about uh, virtual tours of Disneyland Paris, uh, which last week we had the the show mm -hmm. uh, from right. Paris that was streaming. Right. Uh, then we have 
more Disney Park recipes. Mm-hmm. We've, we've done selective ones here and there, but right here was a whole list of a of whole them. list of recipes yeah. to give you that warm, fuzzy <coughs> Disney feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have a, a more of a generic one, but it does certainly deal with with mm-hmm. Disney and, right. and whether or not theme parks in general will be open this summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had talked offline about this, and right, the fact right. that it's less of an uh, impact on Disney that's an all-seasons park, whereas right. more of your other regional ones mm-hmm. where you're only open for one season, Right. you know, it's a huge gamble to try to get those parks ready. So we'll talk about that in more detail. Mm-hmm. In our... Star Wars Insights, we will talk about Darth Maul's return, uh, setting up uh, Mandalorian Season 2, which, uh, again, I hope there aren't any spoilers because I haven't watched all of uh, Clone I'm not all caught up on Clone Wars this week, so um, <laughs> we'll have to screen that for spoilers. Uh, then Disney Plus uh, announced that the they'll be putting an eight-part Mandalorian docuseries together, mm-hmm. uh, which should be interesting. Uh, they they hinted that we might get some insights into some of the answers that we were looking for from last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, then our entertainment news, we will talk about San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con being canceled due to coronavirus, which um, not unexpected, but mm-hmm. unfortunate. Um, but uh, right behind that, we have some alternatives for you if you're missing convention life. Mm-hmm. So. Um, stick around for that, and then we will have our insightful picks of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so another show that is unfortunately tainted by the coronavirus, but uh, one in a way that we are certainly trying to put a positive spin on things to help everyone get through things. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with Disney Detective, and we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So first up on Disney Detective, we've got virtual tours of Disneyland Paris. Tell us about that. So this weekend, uh, this past weekend, Disneyland Paris actually celebrated its 28th anniversary. Um, But unfortunately, being closed, uh, there were a couple of web series that actually came out to be able to give you a virtual tour of Disneyland. Disneyland Paris. Uh, So in the Disney Parks blog post about the French park, uh, Ken Rafferty Jr. said, among the many stories that make Disneyland Paris unique, it's that it Opening that its opening represents Disney's return to a land that inspired many of the timeless fairy tales shared by Walt Disney in an extraordinary way. Um, so there is a uh, French YouTube series uh, called Once Upon a Time. Uh, it actually has English subtitles, and it takes viewers on a tour of Disneyland, uh, actually of the Disneyland Paris Resort. So there's about 30 short videos, and you'll learn about the different themed lands, um, um, you know, and also tour the on-site uh, resorts as well. So it gives you, you know, a view of, of, of everything, um, you know. And from watching various documentaries from, from Disney+, Plus, uh, when we were watching the Imagineering one, they were showing how, you know, the architecture going into it, it's much different than most of the other parks because they wanted that artsy look to it that french feel you know 
to it. So if you've never been, it's definitely, you know, always been a, a, a bucket list item uh, for me. This is a chance to actually, you know, explore the park, um, you know, through a, a bunch of different, you know, short videos. So. So now these are actually Disney produced. I don't films? think so. I think it's 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 a French YouTube series. Um, you know, it's actually no, it's an it's a Disney Imagineer uh, that that does it. So oh, very cool. So yeah. it should be very well done. We've, yeah, we've liked all the episodes. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I haven't looked through the the videos on, on here to see, you know. What they what they look like so well, we might have to might have to we're gonna have to find one that's a virtual tour of the right. tower for you too right right yeah so that's kind of a sticking yeah. point that we have there yeah <laughs> Uh, so tell us about some Disney recipes so of course everybody's stuck at home everybody's you know cooking different things you know as long as they have the ingredients uh, obviously uh, the first recipe that came out were the churros uh, then obviously last week um, Dole Whip a right. recipe came out for that so in this article uh, that BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed has uh, it's actually 17 different uh, wow. Disney, Disneyland. That's a whole cookbook. That there. is a whole cookbook. Um, the one that I thought was interesting was the gray stuff, um, which is from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, they serve it as a little uh, dessert if you eat in uh, the castle, uh, Beauty and the Beast castle. And it's actually, and I, I just quickly looked it up, it's actually vanilla pudding, milk, Oreos, and Cool Whip. Oh, and chocolate pudding as well, um, with sprinkles. So that sounded pretty easy. Um, but it so, doesn't taste. It doesn't taste like those are the ingredients. Right, that right. It. That's what you know. Like I'm still waiting for like the blue milk. Right, you know what right. the recipe is is for that because we couldn't you know figure it out. Um, mint, the they had the mint julep uh, from New Orleans, uh, New Orleans Square. Uh, the Mickey uh, beignets. The Blue Bayou Gumbo, um, Hand Dipped Corn Dogs, uh, the Monte Cristo. Most of these are from Disneyland, um, like the Monte Cristo. Uh, the Matterhorn Macaroons, uh, Rice Krispie Treats to make you know them in the shape of, of Mickey, right. you know, so it gives you that. Um, apple Freeze. Bacon Wrapped Asparagus. Bacon right. Wrapped. <laughs> you might convince me to eat asparagus. I know. I'm, and we have enough bacon. I just don't have any, you know, asparagus. But if you go to the, the BuzzFeed article, after each, you know, each food, there's a link to, uh, you know, different sites with with the recipes and obviously it ends with um you know the dole whip as well but if you're hungry and you know hopefully you have enough uh <laughs> ingredients or you can order uh to to bring home you well know. we're clearly going to have to put a list of ingredients together and start doing some disney cooking at yeah home. i think that'll be like starting our next weekend uh thing and that was the thing even when i was at the farmer's market the one area they do have you know the dry ingredients but i didn't know what i i needed right. you know so yeah we'll have to do a little research right you know, right some, maybe maybe that'll together. be one of our you know extra podcasts is okay so we tried cooking Here's right yeah we'll <laughs> insights do, into cooking we'll we'll do an entertainment food edition <laughs> right right so i thought that was you know again something kind of you know cute you know because again um you can find you know in some cases you can find the mickey ice cream bars um you know, but here, if you, you know, you're home, you're, you're trying, you know, different baking things. Um, you know, the, the one radio station I listen to, you know, in the mornings when they've been having different guests on, it seems everybody's making banana bread. And yeah. it was funny because I was actually going to make banana bread. Banana bread, the sourdough <laughs> bread. Everyone seems right, to be right. Everybody seems to be making that because I guess everybody seems to, you know, have you know those ingredients so yeah so here's some some disney inspired uh nice treats to to try Very and nice. if you can get again if you can get the ingredients so and they most of them seem like pretty simple ingredients yeah, it's yeah. just you know kudos to the, the chefs at disney for putting the magic together right right uh so the question of the hour is will theme parks open this summer let's let's talk about that one. yeah so this is you know obviously a, a burning question you know you have more of the the regional amusement parks like six flags and cedar fair um that really don't have much of a window to make a decision whether or not 
the 2020 season will even happen. Um, most of the, those parks, you know, around the, you know, the country operate seasonally and the summer months are obviously when they get, you know, the majority of uh, their profits in. Um, you know, obviously the larger theme parks like Disney and Universal and SeaWorld, they operate year round. So, you know, they're feeling the hit now, but at some point, you know, they will open, um, you know, and, and kind of get back to things, um, you know, so so really it's it's they're just not sure, you know, you, do you open? Do you not? Do you just call it a bust right now? Um, you know, as of right now, um, the only state where all five of these companies have a physical presence is in California. And the governor of California actually said this week that large scale events that bring in tens of thousands of people are unlikely to be in the cards this summer. And he was referring to music festivals and other summertime gatherings, but, you know, could also mean, you know, theme parks as well, since they also bring in, you know, a lot of people. Um, so obviously, you know, different thing, different places are, are, are trying to figure it out. Um, Cedar Fair actually announced this week that all of their 2020 annual season pass holders, um, annual and seasonal pass holders will now also include a, the 2021 season at no additional cost. Um, I know that Disney with their annual passes, they were adding extensions on, you know, so people that, you know, their passes were supposed to be expiring in the end of June or something. Right. They were sending out letters to annual pass holders, extending, well, you know, their dates, you know, as well, you know, and for Six Flags, they were hoping to have a mid-May start, um, you know, but still, So let me you ask know. you, you worked for Six Flags many uh -huh. moons ago. Many, many moons ago. Um, for In preparation for getting ready, how far in advance of the opening season do they usually have to put we, in to get ready? We would always start, so, you know, we always opened usually Easter time frame. Okay. Um, so, you know, end of March or the beginning of April was when we so would they'd open. Be open now. We, yeah, we would be open by now, but we would start doing training as early... Like, usually the first week of January is when they would start doing rehires. And by mid-January, mid-January and February was training. Okay. Um, you know, there was training, you know, during the day. There was training on the weekends. So even if they were <clears throat> intending on restarting, they're they, three months behind. Right. They would have already been been doing training and and. and you know, rehiring and you figure, you know, there's the, there's the crew that's already there, the the, you know, the maintenance people, you know, but you figure, um, you know, but where are they there though? I don't know. That's the well, and question. that's the thing is because, well, Disney has their people that are still, you know, they still have security. They do still have maintenance people there, you know, keeping things, you know, up and right, running. Okay. I don't know with, you know, parks like, you know, Six Flags that are only open, you know, for the spring, summer and, you know, early fall. If, you know, you know, because, you know, with the with some of those rides, they actually take some of the the areas apart, right, you know, to right. prepare for the winter and whatnot. And usually as the warm weather starts, they're already going back and putting things back together. So I don't know if stuff like that if they've even started yeah. you know putting anything together in hopes that okay well well we've sort of seen that type of pattern down at the amusement parks mm -hmm. down at the shore too where mm -hmm. you know they start opening almost in a staged approach where they're opening right. some of the simpler rides and then the more complicated right. rides get overhauls and, and stuff that's and you know that's another thing that that's you know is down you know the shore you know we we live in you know we live in new jersey we're you know, not too far from, you know, Wildwood and Ocean City. And, you know, that's another amusement, you know, area. Next month, we're supposed to have the, the Heart Walk. Yeah. And as part of the Heart Walk, one of the amusement areas, which usually isn't open 100%. And that's, that's the one that usually starts at staged approach. Right, putting things right, together, right. Yeah. You know, are they even going to be open? Is the Heart Walk even going to be well, going on? They the, don't even... The question, I guess the real question is, 
is there any point to opening? Who's going to be going to right. these things? Are you going to be able to go? Right. If you're able to go, who's going to want to go to, to a crowded venue like right. this? Right, because that's one of those things. You know, it's, it's one thing to go... I guess, to a movie theater and say, okay, you know, you sit here and you sit six seats away and you sit, you know, where you can. I, actually, I'd be less inclined to go to a movie theater after watching the movie Outbreak and <laughs> watching the sneeze scene. Right. But, but I'm saying, so with that, you know, you can kind of spread people out, but with an amusement park, you're touching the rides, yeah. you know, like how are you, you, can't you cleanse and that. You, can't you can't clean you that can't after, clean. you know, every person, you know, gets off the ride. That's, you know, that's more, you know, that's why, you know, the, the, the regular parks, you know, the playgrounds are closed because yeah. they can't clean, right. you right. know, all of that stuff. So yeah, all, you know, like, yeah, you could open up the boardwalk and, you know, but just not have anything, yeah, you know, and I think this kind of goes <clears throat> goes towards the discussion you and I were having offline mm -hmm. yesterday about what the new normal is going right. to be when when we're able to finally leave our cocoons here. Right, the, the world's going to be different. Right, industries are going to be changed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? and and one of the things you know, very a uh, very Disney related, along with others, is the buffets. Yeah, you know the restaurants that they have. Okay, so once things are kind of open. Do you even have self-service, you know, buffets any anymore, or is that now yeah. a completely dead, you know, a dead industry where you do more family style, you know, like you even get locally, like your Chinese buffets, right? Your Chinese buffets and and you know your Golden Corrals or you know whatever, you know how you know yeah. do you basically just have to change your whole model, you know, uh, and you know. I don't think anyone's thought all this stuff mm -mm. through, and, and no. I think we're going to be in for quite a surprise when things start to mm -hmm. to migrate back to what we thought was normal. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. Well, that's it for Disney Detective uh, this week. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with Star Wars Insights. Okay. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. All right, so first up in Star Wars Insights, Darth Maul. <laughs> so the final season of Star Wars Clone Wars continues on Disney+, Plus, and it continues to kind of set things up in the Star Wars uh, universe. So last week's episode, I guess there were... I haven't been watching it. I don't know where... You are uh, last week is all I'm I'm missing right now. Okay, so, so let's ruin that for me. So <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just gonna generalize because I don't want to ruin it for anyone. Um, so it seems that in this week's episode entitled uh, "Together Again," basically it's tying together various events from Clone Wars with the Mandalorian and also Solo, your pilot. favorite you know movie, a Star Wars story, and the character that's tying all of these things together is a former Sith apprentice known as hmm, Darth Maul. Well, funny. The guy who got chopped in half is tying everything together. <laughs> yeah, who, who, who knew? Um, so basically, you know, in moments that, that kind of set up everything, it, it kind of follows, you know, the Star Wars canon. Um, you know, so it, it again, I'm not going to go through the... Um, the scenes because you haven't watched it, but basically, you know... 
Darth Maul's reveal to have a power that's behind Crimson Dawn, which was the major criminal organization involved in the spice trade. So he's kind of coming in and threatening some people. And, you know, basically it, you're you're setting the stage for Han Solo's Kessel Run. Okay. So it, it's kind of bringing things you know, together. And that then, you know, and at the end of the, the episode, a couple of people kind of reunite and the one person happens to be a leader of the Mandalorians. And that's, I guess, where some of the tie-ins are going to go. So, okay. So, so I, I don't want to, again, I don't want to say too much because you haven't right. seen it and others that well, and, and the <clears throat> last couple of episodes of Clone Wars, this final season, have, have kind of hinted towards that. You right. kind of got the feeling right. that it was going in that direction. I, I still have to question the revisionist history that, that Disney seems to take with well, Star Wars, where they, they'll they tell a story, you'll have no idea where it's based on, right? and then they'll go back in and fill in the pieces afterwards and sort of make up the history to get to that <laughs> right. point. Um, and it's honestly, it's kind of frustrating mm. because it's almost like, well, one is it's almost like they've learned from their mistakes. Mm. They throw something out there and they get a reaction from the fans and then they see how the fans react and then they go back in and clean it all up. Right. We'll with make it all pretty and... history. Right. Right, based on the reaction of the fans. Right. So when um, you know, not a spoiler at this point in time, but at the end of Solo, you find out that Darth Maul right. is in charge. He's the head of Crimson Dawn at this right. point in time right. and that's kind of a shocker. Right. Um especially if you're just a watch the Star Wars movie kind of person. Mm -hmm, which is what I kind of am. Right, and, and most people are. You know, if you read the novels and the mm -hmm. comics and you watched uh, Clone Wars and all the other uh, uh, collateral material, you would know that somehow, after getting chopped in half in Phantom Menace and falling down a reactor shaft, right. Darth Maul somehow lives. Now... Why not? I, I wouldn't suggest it's it's so Im implausible and so ridiculous the the premise in which he comes back that I wouldn't even suggest going back and watching all of that because mm -hmm. he comes back with spider legs and he goes insane and then they, there's Sith witches and there's magical spells and there's all kinds of crazy stuff to get to where you are. Oh, and he has a brother, by the way. Oh, so sure. So yeah, is so, he a good guy? Is he's the brother? Oh, big bro. Guy, oh, okay. And he's so. a mutant brother, and he's got force powers, and and they both wind up fighting the emperor. And it's just, it's terrible. It really is. The whole storyline <laughs> was terrible. Um, but if you don't watch all that stuff or read all right. those books, you have then no you idea. don't know. Right. So at the end of Solo, bam, Darth Maul shows up. You're like, like, wait, he's dead. I thought he was like, dead. Right. If all he did was watch the movies, you think he's dead. <laughs> right. Right. And now they're going back in and they're changing the history and how he gets there and all that stuff. So it's like, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of annoying to, to, to play to the fans in, the, in such a way as to throw out a feeler, mm. get a reaction, and then decide that that's how you're going to write your backstory. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll um, see. I'll probably watch it today. I, I'm a little behind, so. We'll you got see. time. Yeah. <laughs> Not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway. So, Disney Plus, Mandalorian docuseries. Let's talk about that. So, one. obviously, The Mandalorian was a breakout show, and it's now going to receive an in-depth, behind-the-scenes look in an all-new eight-part documentary series um, on Disney Plus. This series will premiere on May the 4th, which... All of us Star Wars Day. <laughs> knows as as the uh, as Star Wars Day, and new episodes will premiere every Friday after that. So obviously they're doing what they did um, before; they're not releasing everything, you know, all at once. So one episode, you know, at a time. Uh, so Disney Gallery: The Mandalorian will explore different aspects of the series through a number of interviews with the cast, crew, production, and production team. Uh, the series will also include never before footage of the cutting room floor, the roundtable conversations um, hosted by the director, writer, and producer, John Favreau. Uh, he described the series as an opportunity for fans to sh uh, to the show to look to get an inside look and see 
it from a different perspective and maybe a greater understanding of how the Mandalorian came together. Um, obviously, one of the topics will be the special effects, um, you know, how they brought the various creatures to life and even how they brought Baby Yoda to life. Yay, wow. Baby Yoda. It's been so long since we've seen Baby Yoda. Um, you know, um, so the... The series obviously premiered November of 2019, and it was a huge hit, and new episodes uh, are slated for um, October of, of this year. Hopefully everything is, is still going to be, um, you know, coming together. Um, but it definitely sounds like this will be a, a good thing, you know, interesting thing for, for us to, to watch, to see, because obviously we've seen different things, you know, uh, coming out with how they did the special effects. That was one of the stories we talked about a couple of weeks ago. The whole, you know, virtual, um, you know, the set and everything. So I'm sure they'll be, you know, talking about that, you know, going yeah, I'd forward. I'm, so. I'm anxious, actually, to see the uh, sort of the behind-the-scenes mm -hmm. science and technology mm -hmm. behind that aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, so um, very cool. But I'm also hoping that that they'll sneak in some uh, and they'll probably secrets and stuff like maybe that. throw a couple of teasers. I'm sure you know until you know October comes around and the new season uh, comes out. Just a little something to tide us over. Right, right. Uh, I that was our last mm -hmm. Disney insights. I did want to throw one last one out there <laughs> for fun. Okay. Um, you can now host if you're a Zoom fan. You can now host your Zoom call with Star Wars backgrounds. That's cool. Uh, this this article that I'm, I'm we're looking at here is from The Verge, uh, but the official Star Wars site allows you to actually grab backgrounds that you can use okay. for your uh, conference calls. And they specifically mention uh, Zoom here, but I'm pretty sure that anything that allows you to do background replacements will work okay. as well. Um, and uh, in addition to your backgrounds here, the one that I was uh, talking to you about earlier in the week is uh, SnapCam. Right. Uh, if you uh, download SnapCam on your PC, mm -hmm. uh, it basically is a replacement camera driver mm -hmm. and allows you to do Snapchat style um, animations and stuff on right. your calls. Right, right. Part of it is they have Star Wars themed ones mm -hmm. where you, there's a couple of Star Wars backgrounds. There's right. one where it's the uh, background of a Star Destroyer hangar with stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. There's one where it's the Emperor's Chamber, the Millennium Falcon, um, and they have a couple of of facial overlays so you can be Darth Vader, for right. instance. Uh, so just a little fun stuff. <laughs> just a little fun stuff uh, for your work at home or conference from home type stuff. Mm -hmm. Wanted to throw that in there real quick. Sure. Um, so that was it for Disney Insider. Star Wars Insider. Star Wars Insider. Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at Disney Plus thinking Star Wars and I'm getting off the I know. Here. It's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll get right into entertainment news. Mm hmm. Alas, San Diego Comic Con is canceled. Yeah, we, you know, I don't think anybody is really surprised, you know, by this. It, it's, uh, I think everybody was just waiting for for the news. Yeah. And again, as we talked about in um, in the uh, theme park news, I couldn't think of the theme park news. You know, the the governor of California basically said. No gatherings, you know, 10,000 people or, you know, or more, basically. And, you know, San Diego Comic-Con, uh, you know, definitely fills that, you know, um, you know, falls into that category, um, you know, you know. And, and for those of you that, you know, don't go to Comic-Cons, San Diego is really the one where all of the news comes out about, you know, all the different movies you know that's where marvel usually makes their announcements of things and and different television shows and and things like that so it's it's really one of it's probably the biggest comic from, from con an announcement standpoint. from an announcement you know yeah. standpoint and and this is actually the first time in 50 years that 
you know, organizers behind it, you know, announced that they they had to not have one. Um, you know, the event will, you know, return to San Diego Convention Center, you know, f- July of 2021. Um, you know, they they basically, you know, said it's with deep regret. We know, you know, between the exhibitors that come and the attendees that come, you know, but right now they have to look out, you know, for everybody's health. And again, you know, the governor of California basically, you know, made it clear that, you know, he didn't want anything going on during the summer, you know, in mass gatherings. It's it's unfortunate that something that has such a longstanding tradition is, is canceled. You kind of have to, and it's impactful to the fans Mm -hmm. and the industry and, 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 you know, the, the producers and everyone, Mm -hmm. but you kind of have to think of, of, the collateral damage that this causes oh, absolutely. too. All the vendors, mm-hmm. all the all the local industry, the mm-hmm. restaurants, all the yeah. places that, yeah. you know, this is where they go positive for the year. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a major source of their income. Right. That's, that's gone. Right. Um, so while, yeah, it kind of sucks that we're not having mm-hmm. it, you know, from a fan's perspective. Right. You know, I can only imagine the negative impact this is having on all the people that live in that region there. Who oh, absolutely. And that was, you know, the thing, you know, earlier this year, you know, Emerald City Comic Con, that was kind of the first yeah. major one where they, up until, what, a couple of weeks before? Yeah, they, they held they, out as long as they you could. You know, they were, they were hoping and they were like, all right, well, make sure if you do come, you're prepared, da 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 You know, don't come if you, they think you're, you know, you're sick. And then it got to the point... Where we're like, nope, we'll see you next year. We yeah. we don't even want to, you know, risk it. Um, you know, some of now Emerald City, as of right now, though, that was the that was the one that they actually postponed it till August. Right. So who knows if they're, you know, at this and point? There's there's an outside and, chance uh, that we yeah. may wind up still having it in August. You know, and and maybe they limit the amount of people. Maybe, you know, like when we went to New York Comic Con, we went on a, a Sunday. We didn't even go oh, on the busiest day. I doing that under these conditions. You know, I could definitely see them saying, you know what, we're only letting so many, you know, like I could totally see them going, all right, you know what, we can't have everybody so jam-packed. We need yeah. to space it out. And you know, you need to space your vendors out. You need right. to space your aisles out. You need to limit the number of people that mm-hmm. come in. You need to have, you know, I could some see type them doing, you know, sanitary conditions that you have. Or to I keep could out. even see them doing how, um, you know, they were doing Galaxy's Edge with time tickets. You only can go in yeah. for four hours. And then when your four hours is up, you know, a lot of museums, Franklin Institute yeah. does that when they have their special exhibits. You right. get in, here's your mm-hmm. ticket. You're allowed in from this time to this time. And maybe that's kind of the new normal for for some of these things. Like, you're still allowing people in. Obviously, you can't let, you know, all the people in that would want to, but you're limiting it and you're making it safer, you know, for others. And that might be a viable alternative to what we've got today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So, all options. But... It, bad news that San Diego's canceled, right. but we have some virtual events. Let's right. talk about and, those at least. And on well, positive you know, and we've been, you know, kind of, I've been, you know, mentioning them for, excuse me, a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, now there was this article on, on sci-fi basically talking about, you know, putting all the, the virtual comic cons, you know, together, um, you know, in, in kind of one area. Um, so as I had been mentioning, uh, wizard world, they've been doing various different live streams, um, of different things. So they had the cast of once upon a time, they had the cast of Buffy, uh, an angel. Um, they, uh, I think, just over this weekend, or maybe it is this weekend, um, Sci-Fi's The Magicians, um, uh, Ed Asner, they were going to be doing a one-on-one you know, with him. Now, I don't know if once the event is done, if you can find it like on YouTube or, or if it's like a one-and-done type thing. I believe Gary Busey is supposed to be another one. I saw so, that. So, yeah. you know, like every week, you know, once or twice a week, they're they're doing various different ones just through, you know, Wizards and they're free. You know, you just have to stream, uh, you know, now if you did want to get 
some one-on-one -on -one time or get an autograph, yeah, you could, you know, you could pay. Um, but other than that, you know, free, go, go ahead and, and do it. Um, then their um, comic book day is usually the first weekend in May. So it seems that they're doing an alternative free comic book day. Um, so comic book day is, is usually a free event. Usually all of your local comic book stores get some sort of, you know, free samples uh, to give out. So now they've basically kind of created an online substitute. So it'll be a two day event. Uh, they'll actually have panels, free digital comic books and other surprises. And um, I believe if you go, they, I think they had a Facebook page so you could go to, to get more information of, uh, about that. Uh, then there was a virtual, virtual fan expo, May 2nd and 3rd, um, where again, they were going to be doing a virtual panel, online happy hours, uh, interactive game rooms, um, you know, they'll even have, you know, different vendors, uh, available, uh, to, to buy from. Um, then there was, uh, the Nebula Conference, which is normally the end of May. That's, uh, for science fiction and fantasy writers. They're going to be doing uh, a virtual, you know, get together, uh, at the end of May. Um, then there's actually the Star Wars and Cosplay Convention, uh, which goes usually from uh, April 26th to May 17th. So they're doing their first ever, you know, online uh, get together. Uh, now this one actually, you know, did have an entrance fee. It was $6, though. And I guess it's going to be like an eight hour, you know, online event. So really, you know, not that much. Right. Um, money then Worldcon from New Zealand now you know for us we're probably never gonna get to <laughs> yeah chances of us going to New Zealand New for Zealand. a comic con but hey slim. here's an opportunity to you know to to do that um I know there was another one I think called Homecon um that they've been doing you know very various very things. creative so, approaches yeah to every... keeping things alive and keeping right. things going and right. keeping that spirit mm -hmm. moving and so forth yeah yeah and you know so many of them you know are asking you know if you can you know give money you know donate to whatever you know fund um you know to, to help others out during this time yeah. and you know if you can't but you still want to you know participate you know again most of them are, are free of charge so and, and if nothing else people need an outlet right now mm -hmm. everyone's cooped up in the house they yeah. can't go anywhere they can't do anything yeah these are giving us that outlet mm -hmm. that ability to have a little bit of a release a little bit of yep. entertainment you know it's one thing to be stuck in the house mm -hmm. for a given period of time but to be stuck in the house with this lingering omen of fear mm -hmm. over you yeah. has a psychological drain on oh, you. Oh, absolutely. And and outlets like like this are really, you know, mm -hmm. helpful to get through these times. Yeah. Yeah. Um that was actually the last article we had. No. I had Oh, no. wasn't? I thought we had No, the concert. Oh. <laughs> uh, see. That's what I get for jumping around too much here. I'm sorry. Stop jumping. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. So Tell there's Tell us about the so there's, one it's One World Together at Home special. It actually airs tonight, um, and it's going to be a two-hour special. Um, it's actually going to be basically on almost every network, ABC, NBC, um, CBS Networks, iHeartMedia, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Yahoo, Twitch, Amazon Prime. Basically, if you can connect to it, you're going to, you know, you're going to be able to see it. Um, it'll be a two hour telecast with Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Paul McCartney, uh, Lizzo, Elton John, Celine Dion, Sean Mendez, Billy Joel Armstrong, um, Chris Martin and the Rolling Stones, which was kind of like, what? <laughs> they're, they're doing this too. Um, so it starts at eight o'clock. But starting at 2 p.m. Eastern time, they're actually uh, just streaming only. They're doing a six hour pre telecast um, and that'll feature other celebrities, um, you know, coming on and, and doing things. Uh, so Annie Lennox and Adam Lambert, um, Jennifer Hudson, you know, Michael Buble. So, you know, basically a whole 
music festival day is going on today, basically starting at at two p.m. So oh. you know, if Comic Con and I almost like skipped over that. Oh, wow. I know, Jeez. Right? So you know, so two p.m. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to be streaming from, but I'm sure if you do a search for you know One World. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, together one world at together at home. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, you know, and and well, and when stream everyone is it, done so. streaming our podcast, today, right? You can, can go check, and search it, it uh, Twitch, and look for it. <laughs> right, it's probably you know there too. So you know, it's basically um, it's aimed at celebrating uh the health workers on the front lines. Um, you know, and you know, obviously they're going to be asking, you know, for donations, um, you know, for the, you know, for, for various organizations. Cause that's, um, you know, what most of these uh, well, it's, are, it's, what we it's, right it's kind now. of what, what we need, yeah. you know? So again, if you're not doing anything tonight, <laughs> cause you're not uh, we'll going out, you know, throw it on and take a look, throw it on and, and take a look. So yes. Now I am done with entertainment news. Okay, so I did want to throw one last one in, uh, and this one was uh, more of an honorable mention than anything mm -hmm. else. Kind of sad news. Uh, I yeah. saw an article um, yesterday, I think, the day before, mm -hmm. that uh, actor Brian Dennehy has passed away at mm -hmm. age 81. Uh, he was a two-time Tony Award winner, which mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of, a very, very established uh stage actor uh i remember him most from f the first blood you know first rambo movie mm -hmm. i remember him um, from cocoon he was in cocoon yeah yeah uh, had a 50-year career mm -hmm. um very humble you know i've seen interviews with him he's been a very uh charismatic character actor mm -hmm. uh, but um a very down to earth you know in an interview he was talking about you know, I'm very fortunate. I have a nice house. It's not a mansion. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not a palace, but it's nice. I am comfortable. Right. Um, I I was able to put my kids through school, um, and I've had a positive impact on the world. And, mm -hmm. and what more could you ask for? What of a legacy? What more could you ask for? Right. Right. Uh, so very talented actor. Uh, was not related to right. COVID nineteen. Mm -mm. So you know. Not that there's much consolation in that, but right. it's... Right. But a long life. Uh, yes. You know. a, 81 years old, Brian Dennehy. So that was all we had for entertainment news. We will come back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick, dear. So uh, my insightful pick uh, is a show that's on Netflix called Unorthodox. Um, it is a German-American drama miniseries that debuted on Netflix uh, March 26th. And the series is actually loosely based on Deborah Feldman's 2012 autobiographical uh, book called Unorthodox, The Scandalous Rejection of My Hasidic Roots. Uh, it's the first Netflix uh, series that is actually primarily in Yiddish. Um, so there are, you know, it is mostly subtitles. So if you're not a fan of, of subtitles, this is not, you know, the, the show for you. Um, but the story, uh, it follows the 19-year-old uh, Jewish woman named Esty who runs away from her arranged marriage and an ultra-Orthodox ultra community in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Um, and she ends up moving to Berlin where her estranged mother lives and tries to navigate a secular life and take classes as a, at a music conservatory. Uh, her husband, who finds out that she's pregnant, travels to Berlin with his cousin by order of a rabbi to try and find her. Um, so the series, again, is basically loosed on um, the book. Um, it's interesting because it's only a, a four-part um, miniseries, um, but then they also had a kind of 20 minute making of um, and you get to meet the author and what she says is, you know, that everything that kind of happened in Brooklyn was really what had happened with her life. But what happened in Berlin in the show um, that wasn't based off of her life. So that, so that's where it differs, but it's very interesting to see, um, 
you know, if if you aren't familiar with the culture and the rituals, you know, behind it, this gives you a very um, behind the scenes look um, between, you know, the wedding, the everything that goes on, you know, between the arranged marriage and, you know, various things with the holidays and, and mikvahs and and things like that, you know, things that, you know, if you don't already know, I'm 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 Jewish. Um, I'm not Orthodox. I was never brought up Orthodox. And I knew certain things, you know, that went on and there were some things that I had never seen uh, or knew about, you know, with this and, it, and, you know, and, and the, the documentary portion of it was very interesting too, to see how, you know, how much research they did to, to do it justice and, and make sure that everything, you know, was done, you know, correctly. Um, so it's not a very fast paced. It, it is kind of, slowish but it is a very interesting you know look you know in this this life that most people you know don't know about so interesting yeah very interesting pick mm -hmm. thank you cool. thanks so my pick this week is kind of off the wall we'll say <laughs> yours um, are always like that so so Buying is a wiki this week, uh, and and it's, it's for a very specific reason. Okay. I, I'm the type of person, uh, like many people, when you go to any wiki, uh, the whole idea is to get lost in it. Mm. You know, follow the various links and, and learn and, and soak it in and everything. Um, as you know, uh, I was not a fan of... Walking Dead. When it started. When it started. I missed the first, what, seven seasons? Right. Um, I started kind of shoulder surfing when you were watching the later seasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I went back and I binge watched all of the seasons. So yep. I caught up on the TV series, uh, but I never read the graphic novels. Right. Uh, so I learned that the graphic novels are loosely, you know, the, the, the show is loosely based right. on the graphic novels, but the graphic novels take very different twists and turns and different characters and, and outcomes and so forth. So I wanted to kind of learn the story of the graphic novels that are told in the graphic novels, but I don't have, I'm not the type of person to sit down and read graphic novels. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more inclined to sit and read a, a regular novel. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like to let my imagination paint the picture for me. Um, so I stumbled upon, you know, the Wikipedia page, um, which is at fandom.com, walkingdead.fandom.com. And I kind of used that to do lookups based on the TV show. A mm -hmm. character would pop up, and I'd look up that character and get a backstory and so forth. And I kind of stumbled upon the fact that they had summaries of all the episodes, or of all the issues, I should mm -hmm. say, but they have all the episodes as well. And I started reading through the serialized summaries of the episodes. Mm -hmm. And I found them to be, you know, not to use a, not to get corny, but insightful. Um, they, they really did a very good job of summing up what the story was going through without getting into the minutia. You kind of got that 30,000 foot picture of how the story progressed. Okay. Uh, kind of the old fashioned cliff notes version mm -hmm. of the walking dead novels. So they've got every single episode up to the last episode, which I think was one ninety three, I think, or something okay. like that. Uh, so I started reading through that and I thought, wow, this is a, a really good resource. If, if you're a fan of the show, but you want to know the graphic novels, you don't have the time to sit down and read the novels. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't really found a good online resource to get these. You could buy the compendiums and stuff like that. Right. Right. That's a lot of reading to go through. Right. And they're heavy. They're, yes. Because I have one. <laughs> That's a lot of trees to go That's through. That's a as well. lot of trees. <laughs> um, so I started going through these. I'm up to around episode one or issue 125, somewhere okay. in there. The Whispers had just, uh, just appeared. Uh, they're kind of a new phenomenon here. So I'm almost up roughly in timeline to where the show, the show is. is. Okay. Uh, so I'm curious where it goes from here as far as the graphic novels go. But I thought it was a great resource to give people. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I spent a couple of hours reading these now, and I'm, I'm very impressed with them. You could do the same thing if you're catching up with the TV series. They go episode by episode and give you the same quality summaries that you have. They have summaries of the various video games out there. They've oh, got wow. Fear the Walking Dead summaries. They've got, I mean, it's an incredible resource. You can hmm. go in and look at character profiles. Okay. Um, they do. I, the one thing that actually got me turned on to it was I was looking up to try to get perspective on where the various locations were, where okay. Hilltop was and Alexandria and where these are and how far away they are. And okay, so... You know, early on they were driving these. Now they're walking them. How long does it take? Okay. Um, and then I stumbled into everything else. And it gotcha. was just this flood of information in here. Okay. Um, and the one thing that really uh, I took away from it was The Walking Dead has an incredible universe mm -hmm. of story to it. Right. The depth, the characters. Um, I really didn't realize how r story rich it was mm -hmm. um and it has so little to do with zombies right which is the most amazing thing right right you know it's like 30 percent zombies and 70 percent you know human drama mm -hmm. yeah um, so i was very impressed with the writing um which i don't i don't certainly don't want to knock uh the comic writers but i don't think i would have gotten the same value out of the comic that i do uh, reading the summaries themselves because I get the I get to put all the scenes together in my head. You know, I get okay. to imagine what these characters look like and the looks on their faces and stuff, rather than kind of having it done for me. Uh, so it gives me a whole different appreciation for the stories. But uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at the Walking Dead wiki at WalkingDead.fandom.com. Cool pick. Uh, we'll be right back with, uh, plugs. So, uh, that I think is the show for this mm -hmm. week. Uh, just if you are interested, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, uh, if you're watching these pre-recorded on our YouTube channel, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we do stream live uh, six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email us at comments at insights into things dot com. On Twitter at insights underscore things. YouTube, as I said, youtube.com slash insights into things. On the web at uh, www.insightsintothings.com. Uh, audio only versions are available at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And then on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. And I think that is all. I think that's it. All right, folks, stay safe and yep. uh, we Wash will talk your hands. to you. And don't touch anyone. Don't touch anyone. And we'll. <laughs> We'll talk to you next week. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.